Hey guys, welcome back to Mr. Canucks Grow. My name is Matt, if this is the first time you're stopping by. We're at the end of flower in the 5x5 where all the plants are putting out some beautiful fade in color. It was during week 4 I fed the plants with the last feed of slow time release organic fertilizer from Gaia Green and since then the 6 plants in the 3 gallon pots have just been receiving water pH to around 6.5. I'm very happy with how this garden flushed out over the middle to end of flower. Majority of the plants in here are yellowing out showing great signs they are properly being depleted of nutrients. It definitely took a few harvests to understand just how this organic slow time release feed worked with the flushing process because this is known as a no flush required way of growing but I definitely think this can cause confusion for a lot of new growers because you can't continue to feed the plant right until the end of harvest without still understanding you need to let your plants deplete the nutrients before harvesting otherwise you're gonna have the exact same issues as a typical bottle nutrient grower would have if they didn't perform the flushing process. The reason why it's often referred to as a no flush required is because you amend and then just water when needed until harvest time. I don't run gallons of water through the pots to flush nutrients like a bottle nutrient grower has to. I simply just water when the plants want the water and let the plants go through the flower cycle of which, when they approach the end of flower, naturally stop consuming food and start depleting nutrients, which is when you begin to see the canopy start fading and turning yellow. All I'm doing as a grower is just keeping a rich medium for the roots to live in, the plants are the ones feeding themselves when hungry. They uptake the food when needed, not because I gave it to them on a specific day like a plant would behave in a bottle nutrient grow. I do find it takes about 5 full weeks from the last feed before the plants start to fade out and get ready for the harvesting process. I would recommend trying to schedule your last feed to be coordinated in conjunction with the strains you are running to allow for this time for the plants to deplete their nutrients prior to your harvest. I have found that it was simpler to run the same strains multiple times because you can just adjust based on the prior grows of when to give that last feed. But in the end it's just important to understand that the cannabis plants do require a fade come harvest time because this ensures the plants are in the motion of depleting nutrients which just means you're going to have a high quality product that is healthier and more enjoyable to consume. And that's just my take on organic flushing and if you want to know more on the process of how to dry and cure your flowers I have videos on that you can just click the top right corner or see the video links down below in the description. Okay, so in this 5x5, I do have 6 plants total and they are in 3 gallon pots, of course using cocoa as the medium and Gaia Green Organic Amendments. I have 2 stacked Granddaddy Purples. I have 2 Girl Scout Cookies, which are always a beautiful looking flower come harvest time with the purples and of course the super fasty rock dense buds. I have 1 Chocolate Man OG, which is a very large plant in size. This one plant alone probably could be spread open in a scrog to almost cover this whole 5x5 on its own, but it's more or less right now just jammed in here with buds flopping down everywhere. I did tie some string around the bottom of the canopy to help the flowers from falling all the way down to the ground. I just don't want to bother tying each top to the ceiling of the tent. I'm just going to let them flop over until it's time to chop just to make my life easier. I also have one smaller critical kush plant which is jammed way in the back which is also covered by both the granddaddy purple and chocolate man OG. Now the environment in this grow has been superb with lots of airflow and air exchange throughout the entire canopy. The temperatures have been averaging mid to high 70s and the RH has been around 40 to 50 percent. The three ES 300s have been dimmed this entire grow and never went over 750 watts. The units were actually dimmed to 600 for most of the flower cycle. I then cranked them up to 750 watts during week 5 but in the last two weeks of flower I turned them back down to 575 watts. Now I did try to turn the three ES 300s full blast to run 900 watts of power draw from the wall and when I did 
that I had electrical surges any time the dehumidifier would turn on and this would cause all of the power in the grow room to shut off. So what I did to fix that was I dimmed the three ES300s down to 750 watts and then I moved the dehumidifier to a different power source which was not a part of this grow room and I had zero problems with surges here on out. Now because I moved the dehumidifier to a different power source, I had watts to spare and I probably could have ran a full 900 watts, but based on how well this grow went, I'm not sure if it was needed. The flowers really stacked and densed up nicely and because I was running it at 750 watts, the equipment in the grow room had an easier time keeping the entire environment in check, which of course the plants thrive from. For this video, I really just wanted to focus on talking about the flushing process for organic amendments and hopefully help clear things up for some new growers. If you did enjoy this video or found it helpful in any way, just by hitting that like button, you will be supporting me as a creator. And leaving a comment is another easy way for you to help the channel grow. And of course, if you have questions, just drop them down below. I will get back to you. I also make Patreon videos for those who want to support me there. It opens up access to a bunch more content every month. I'm blown away by how many new Patreon members came on board in the last two weeks alone. Thank you so much guys and girls. Lastly, all the links and coupon codes to all the equipment used in this video are down below in the description along with last week's full rosin guide tutorial if you haven't seen that already. Catch you next week for a brand new episode. Dry toe is fucking delicious. <laughs>